Bungie unveiled a new Vidoc and with it a host of new information for their new season, Season of the Drifter. If you want to see more Destiny 2 content on this channel, like, subscribe, click on that notification bell, comment below your thoughts on the new info reveal, and let's discuss. Right, so on with the video. New Gambit Experience is a two-factor affair. You've got Gambit Prime and something called The Reckoning. When you first start playing Gambit Prime, it will be very similar to that of the current Gambit mode. Much like the Dreaming City, the new Gambit experience will also change with cycles, so it seems this cycle stuff will most likely be here to stay going forward. I'm not a big fan of it, but I'm not also going to disregard it and say that I won't play this game because of the cycle, even if I am not a fan of it because all it does essentially is time gate stuff, like the Shattered Throne for example. The game mode is a single round, unlike its older sibling, which is three rounds, even with the changes being made to it. Previously, to take moats from your opposing team, you simply invaded and defeated them. Here in Gambit Prime, there is now the ability to drain moats from your opposing team, though not much is known about it outside of that. Prime Evils now have mechanics you need to undergo to take them down, which I think is really cool and adds a new layer element to actually defeating the Prime Evil. In fact, I think if this actually works really well, this is something that should be incorporated into the standard Gambit experience and maybe even make that a one round affair. Because of this, no longer will you be burning your Primeval down. Bungie have also added private matches to the roster of Gambit game modes available. After you enter and play a game of Gambit Prime and you finish a game of Gambit Prime, you're transported into what's called the Reckoning, a PvE focused horde mode it seems. I mean, based on what they say, it seems it will be a horde mode, and from what we saw it does very much look like a reskinned Infinite Forest from the Halloween event we had not so long ago. I could be wrong, but initial impressions are simply that. I really hope it's not another horde mode. To be honest, I'm kind of sick of horde modes. We have a horde mode in Escalation Protocol, Blind Well, The Free Forges. At this point, I think they have saturated the horde modes 10 times over, so please Bungie, tell me I'm wrong. Gambit Prime being an endgame activity will have a power requirement. Fret not if you're not at the correct power level though, as the Drifter will have as the Drifter will have what Bungie are calling power surge bounties. They are here to help you to get to 640 power within around 2 hours of gameplay, which isn't bad really. But after you have access, you find yourself facing another dilemma. Roles. Yes, it seems Bungie is finally adding roles to a game mode, and they will all be distinguished in a colour-coded manner. The new gear you'll be earning will have the ability to change colour and from what it seems, the perks with it will change as the colour changes. So, so you have four roles. Reaper which is green, Collector which is white, Sentinel which is yellow and Assassin which is red. Reaper is generally the one who kills the most combatants. Collector, as you can imagine, collects the most moats. Sentinel will be the one that defeats the most taken, blockers and helps defeat the prime evil. And finally, Assassin, as you can imagine, is the one that invades and defeats the most players. This is the PvP element of it. These will also provide the highest tier perks which I assume will be focused in Gambit. We will also be getting two new maps for Gambit, New Arcadia which will be released in week 1 and is based in Mars, and Deep 6 released in week 2 based in Titan. This will also bring three new weapons, Spare Rations which is a hand cannon, Soul Survivor which is a sniper rifle, and Doomsday which is a grenade launcher. They do all look decent, but I'm unsure if they'll become meta or not. Maybe? Who knows? I'm sick of metas, but at this point in time, the current meta has pretty much made me hate PvP, so anything that can change this meta is a good meta. Of course, I'll probably regret those exact words, and someone's going to refer back to this video and say, remember what you said? But at this point, I'll stand by it. So the Reckoning will be the primary focus of the DLC. The Reckoning is a fully focused PvE encounter, which will essentially be the end game when it comes to this which will essentially be the end game when it comes to the Joker's Wild update. At first you'll only have access to tier 1, but week 2 and 3 will unlock soon enough as people unlock them. Crucible Along with all of this, you'll have a Crucible Pinnacle weapon, which is confirmed to be an SMG, and a Vanguard one, which seems to be a scout rifle from what I could glean. The form will return, and Season of the Opulence is the name for the final annual pass content and the seasonal events. And it seems Season of the Op and it seems Season of Opulence is the final name, and it seems Season of Opulence is the name for the final annual pass content. And along with this, seasonal events will be coming, called the Revelry, which we still know naught about. 
Overall, the Vidoc was pretty well done, but if Bungie is anything, they are the masters of hype. I just hope they did enough this time. So everyone, let me know below what you think. Good, bad, ugly, let me know in the comment section below and let's get to discussing the future of Destiny here once again in this channel. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Until the next time, remain legend.